thanks to everyone. I, I'll be brief because it is very late now. <laughs> so after, after my point, uh, Chair will also say something. Uh, as I said in, uh, in the beginning that we all, we said it, uh, had two more, th uh, two more days on different issues. We have organized uh, different, different uh, issues all together. So tomorrow we will have a day devoted on Ganga River BC policy dialogue in which we will discuss about barrages and navigation issues and related that. And we will also cover the issues of climate change and livelihood issues related to Ganga uh, River Basin. And many activists, many uh, many ideologues within the movement, and many uh, grassroots workers, they are coming to discuss the issue. So this is the uh, tomorrow's program. It Dr. Will be Mittal is leading this program, and. Yes, Dr. Mittal. Yes, Dr. Dr. Uh, Oka Mittal will lead this program, and uh, the key presenter on the issue of Ganga River Basin will be uh, Mr. Uh, Anil Prakash. He will discuss about the Ganga navigation issues and Farakka barrage. Let's see. And uh, day after tomorrow, we will also have another session on the contours of sustainable agriculture and the challenges of NG government and uh, challenges before NG government because they are in the power and uh, the sustainability and the agriculture and each kind of uh, thing related to sustainability uh, is under attack. So we have to, we have to discuss. So many people, uh, uh, many experts are coming. We are discussing the issues related uh, related with the agricultural labor, which is the Prof, uh, Professor K.B. Saxena uh, agreed that he'll chair the first session and uh, Shri Jasvi Singh will be the speaker on agricultural labor. Professor Dinesh Abrol, Abrol Thab, uh, will also talk about the uh, paradigm shift, comprehensive paradigm shift for sustainable rural economy with focus on agriculture. And our, uh, another uh, speaker on the same panel Professor Rajvish, Rajeshwari Rana, she will also talk about the tours involving a paradigm shift for sustainable agriculture policy. And uh, uh, Anil Prakash ji will also uh, talk about the farmers, fishermen, agriculture, and Ganga, the, these issues. The second session will be on the uh, different aspects related to the, uh, the restructuring the government system, the governance system. Uh, and the challenges of sustainable agriculture. The trade and, uh, Mr. Afsar Jafri will talk about the trade and agriculture, uh, uh, sustainable agriculture, because as we know that we are talking about, uh, we are talking about the international, uh, uh, international agreements at the UN level. But we also facing, India and this uh, Global South also facing the bilateral uh, agreements. Uh, the free trade agreement. So there are many different, uh, different, different dynamics related to that point. So we are also uh, uh, trying to discuss that issue on that evening. And the the uh, other issue will, which we will cover, that uh, challenges of preserving and nurturing biodiversity for the uh, sustainable agriculture. Because we have the very hegemonic idea of the agriculture, we have. We have to open our eyes and we have to discover that there are as many things as we are, we are, uh, we, we can see. We, we are not seeing many things, so we have to open our eyes and we are, uh, we have, we have, we are lucky that Dr. Lena Gupta from SPWD is with us right now and she will talk about that. She will, uh, most probably she will also talk about the Timbuktu experience. Uh, the agricultural experience and she will also talk about the Gujarat experiences, the uh, native people, how they are uh, uh, trying to work on uh, nurturing and preserving the bio biodiversity through the, through the uh, sustainable agricultural uh, ways. And the uh, another very important thing which we, we are trying to discuss that the limits of green revolution, there are still many people who see that as a proud thing that green revolution was a 
big thing and we uh, we must continue that kind of revolutions so we are also trying to discuss that limit we have uh, professor jain bandopadhyay yes river basin policy yes professor jain bandopadhyay ji uh, uh, icmo he was the former director of icmo and he is with us uh, so he will also talk about the ganga river basin policy and the himalaya himalayan issue uh, with us uh, uh, with that thanks Uh, it's quite late. I will not take more than two, three minutes of your time. Uh, some very brief uh, comments, mostly clarification. Uh, I had read uh, the manifesto of the growth movement when it first started a few years back, and as far as I can recall, uh, the two central points that they were making in that manifesto were. Uh, the people of southern countries, they have a standard of living which is clearly below what it ought to be. So their degrowth movement, at least the initial manifesto that uh, I, I, I read, uh, believed that the <coughs> standard of living in these countries should come up. And consumption in rich countries was too high. So it should come down. In a certain sense, uh, uh, re reduction of inequality <coughs> and some uh, uh, minimum standard of living, these things were incorporated in the initial My second comment is uh, uh, there was uh, one comment which was made uh, from there, uh, which was misunderstood. So, but the, the comment was quite important and it needs to be clarified. Uh, what actually uh, the comment said was that uh, whether I uh, increase my energy consumption or reduce it, whether I uh, go on a bike or whether I drive a BMW, it's not going to make much of a difference. I mean, the basic idea, I think, uh, behind the comment, though the, the language that was used was quite different, but the basic idea was that the, if you really want, if you're serious about it, then it has to be done at a different level. So don't extract, uh, I mean, petroleum. I mean, the, the, the real thing is there. So at that level, you are not doing anything. Uh, it's a perfectly uh, good comment, valid comment, but in this connection, I think uh, uh, it is a one-sided comment in the sense that uh, sometimes what happens is that people who are doing, uh, who are creating the crisis, who are doing the damage, who are doing the destruction, they are in complete command. Uh, uh, so. It seems that uh, there's absolutely nothing that one can do about it because they are in complete command. So where, I mean, how do you? Obviously, the, as far as the energy companies are concerned, they uh, rule the world. I mean, for all practical purposes, the companies which are uh, trying to destroy agriculture by introducing genetically modified foods is so powerful. Monsanto. I mean, uh, they have full backing of the U.S. government. So. Uh, what does one do? I mean, under these conditions, it's, it's not that one is actually helpless. And it is here that I think uh, we need to learn from God. We have to be, uh, it was he who actually showed the way. What he showed was that it was possible for even one person to bring about a change. And this, we, uh, no matter in which kind of society we are living, right? Asim is right that communities have been destroyed. I mean, by capitalism, by by modernity, by. But at the same uh, time, I mean, uh, other virtual uh, uh, societies have come into existence, Facebook or whatever. And fundamentally, human beings are social creatures. So before Gandhiji's movement, people used to save for years to buy a suit. Then once Gandhiji's movement picked up, 
then the same people came out with those suits to burn them. It's possible. It is possible what people are hankering after today. A, it is possible to create a climate where they would say that these are the things which one should avoid. I mean, so it's, it's not that that is the only route. I mean, one is not denying that obviously if say something happens uh, at that level and the energy companies are uh, uh, police controlled, regulated, yes, some change is possible, but some change is possible from the other, side, uh, other end also. And in, the individuals can, can and uh, do make the uh, lot of difference. So I think this particular point actually should not be asked. Finally, <clears throat> my la last comment is that there is a, uh, uh, this, at this juncture, uh, what one needs to do is to uh, pick what is of value from every civilization. Because it is not that, it is not one civilization versus another civilization. This is actually, the war is, civilization is in such great retreat and what we consider today to be civilization actually is a path to destruction. So for instance, uh, the growth movement, as I said, it has very, right from the beginning, it has very positive features, but it is lacking something. And it is, and there is nothing that actually, the growth movement people who have started, they are not the people who can ever incorporate it because it's uh, not there in their tradition. So they have to pick it out from some other civilization. Uh, it, it is not simply a question of reducing or increasing consumption. What we tend to forget is that uh, same want, same need can be fulfilled in many different ways. It is the nature of consumption that actually has to be <coughs> carefully looked at. And it is here that fundamental elements of Indian civilization will be very helpful. <coughs> but we must remember that it's, it's not in, it is not Indian civilization versus Western civilization because there is much of value in Western civilization also. And after all, Western civilization created a person like Henry David Thoreau. 19th century, I mean, one person alone. And what did he do? He actually, he say, he say, uh, his writing should be read actually, it's fantastic. He says, I, he was walking in the forest. And he said, because I took the same path, so actually I was disturbing the forest. This is such total faith and dedication to nature, I mean, Belief, this belief in the pristine beauty of uh, uh, nature and uh, almost thinking of forest as a sacred place. I mean, uh, just like the uh, Indian rishis in Aranyak, etc., I mean, thought of uh, forests as very holy places, exactly the same kind of feeling you get. And in 19th century, the, the forest that actually Henry David Thoreau used to visit. Today is uh, downtown uh, Boston, and the name of the forest was Concord. And the uh, same name, of course, is given to that plaza, which is uh, now, of course, uh, as I said, is a part of Boston city. This man went to jail because he refused to pay taxes. He said, I cannot, in my, in, in, in my conscience, I cannot pay taxes to a government which actually enslaves me. And the, any any government, any state which uh, has which condones slavery is a government. I will I refuse to give my allegiance to. I think we, we are. Uh, I mean, here is a, here, here is a person from a completely different tradition, and he's uh, uh, he's uh, the kind of things that he's saying. He's saying. I mean, they are exceptional value even today. So I think it's not so much. What, what the, the way this debate actually has to be now conducted uh, is civilization versus the 
ini uh, of uh, I mean one would think that one is uh, using a word which is uh, completely there. But I think uh, at some level this is the right word. Uh, civilization versus barbarism that the modernity has got. Why, why, why this word barbarism? This is anti life. It's just destroying life. It's, it's not just human communities which actually have been destroyed by, by uh, modernity. Just look at what it is doing the community of uh, communities of elephants, rhinoceroses. Even insects are dying. Sparrows. Sparrows. The sparrows have disappeared. So I think uh, there is a need to uh, think deeply about these issues. Uh, uh, we have to unlearn a lot of things that we believe in. Uh, it is at the conceptual level that <coughs> actually we need to innovate, think seriously. And uh, only then actually some solution to this very, very severe crisis. Thank you very much. First, to begin with all the speakers, all the discussants, and all of you who have patiently <coughs> listened for more than two and a half hours. Thank you. Finally, Vijayji said that I should, I should uh, give the word of thanks. Thank you so much for. Uh,